recording? Yes. Good. <laughs> uh, okay, so this is um, the, this is what was it? A preliminary sort of the first one we're doing. Yeah. Well, well I'm doing it, but you're involved now. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I'm Daniel Hill, Dandy's Designs, and this is. I am Andy Cheatham of Chill Creative. Yes, we are often work together on various projects, but today we are interviewing our first guest. First guest, would you like to introduce yourself? <laughs> I am Alpha Riff, a uh, hip hop artist who talks about science fiction and Dungeons and Dragons and uh, digital champions, and I love Dan's art, so that's why I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> Not biased whatsoever. <laughs> Okay, and all the questions have nothing to do with like the basic things, the two in depth. I need to introduce, like, uh, Going yeah, so like, um, <laughs> it's pretty much introduce yourself, so. <laughs> <laughs> so that's number one. That's number one, yeah. <laughs> uh, da -da -da. Hmm. Uh, tell us about how you got to what you're doing today. Um, so the, the short story version of it is that I got abducted by the Air Force um, when I came out of my mom's womb. We went to Japan, <laughs> they showed me uh, robots, and uh, I, I felt like I could actually become a robot, so that's why I started trying to do everything in my power to kind of, uh, you know, become like a cybernetic dude, and, and now I am a cybernetic dude. So that's the, that's the short version of it. The longer version is that... Uh, you know, I don't know if, if everybody watching or, you know, listening or uh, whatever knows, but I'm one of those guys where I, I like to mix all kinds of media. I like to mix um, all kinds of musical genres. So I, I got into music really because I liked heavy metal, uh, fell in love with it. And then immediately after that, I kind of gravitated towards hip hop as well, started fusing the two together, started just grabbing like video game soundtracks, throwing those in there. And now it's become like this amalgamation of just weirdness that I put out and people seem to love it. And uh, then I met Dan and I was like, Dan, I need artwork. Dude, help me. <laughs> hey, how did, wait a minute. Did I add you first or did you like come across my work first? I don't, you know what? I honestly don't know. I know that I saw the stuff that you did for Sky Blue and Megaran and um, was it Mr. Wilson that was also on that tour or was it uh, Mr. Miranda? No, it was um, oh, Soltron from D&D Sluggers. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so I saw like, I saw the, the poster and stuff that you did for them for their tour and I was just like, man, that artwork is kind of kind of pristine because it was like a completely different look to art that I had seen like the color your the your, the way you use colors and the way you put them together and everything was completely different from what I had seen so I was like you know I wonder who kind of did the artwork or whatever and I think it might have been something that Rand posted and I was like let me go check out this dude's art but I don't remember who actually contacted who first I think maybe it was just a mutual kind of like dude you're cool yeah and then we <laughs> No, at uh, one point I was like, because I've, I've got quite a lot of success through Mega Ran stuff, I was like, okay, look at all the pe cool people who like work with and stuff and just start adding people like crazy. That's because mm -hmm. like, just get my name out there and just like say, hey, I'm introduce myself and stuff and just start putting myself forward. So I think that might have where I added you. And then I obviously found your music through that and stuff. So, yeah. So, yeah, it worked out pretty well. I, I, I would think so. I think we got a, um, a nice little relationship going here. Yeah, definitely. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks for the kind words about my work. Uh, well, I mean, like, like I said, you know, I had gone through your stuff, and it was like, I saw the artwork, like the the Final Fantasy stuff that you were doing. But I think what really stood out the most to me is when I actually got to like your your game design stuff, where you were doing the artwork for a game, and I was like, oh snap. This dude's like, he's got it all. I was like, okay, I gotta talk to this dude, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, because that, that literally comes from um, years of working with Andy. Because, yeah. like, um, we were at like, high school together. 
and like pretty much not soon after, like after knowing each other, but I realised we both weren't really into games. <laughs> really into games, yeah. <laughs> like, the focus was like Final Fantasy, that's what we started talking about. Yeah. And like, so like he was always doing these game document things, and I was like, I'll just draw all the pictures for you, do all the artwork. Yeah. So hold on, you, you're, you're a game designer? I am, um, yes. Nice! I gotta talk to you as well! But yeah, that's where it started. And like, literally since high school up to like through college and stuff, we were yeah. just doing game documents and I was just drawing stuff from it. Yeah. So that's nice. where practice came from. And then a focus bite and then concentrate that in uni and stuff. So. so, all the all the game art stuff that was like on your site, was that all for his game? And uh, no, that was just a like a university project. The stuff, oh, okay. like a lot older. I mean, the, yeah. the artwork for that isn't as good because it was like <laughs> quite a few years ago. Yeah, it started in year nine. Oh, year nine. So it was like 2003. It was year 11 was born, I remember that one. Okay, so. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I feel so old now. <laughs> I don't know anymore. <laughs> How old am I? How old am I now, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> too, too old, because I can't remember. Uh, four, 13, 14. There you go. Okay, good. <laughs> he does the maths as well. <laughs> <laughs> I just look confused and draw pictures. So what's two plus two? Uh... Nah, you've lost me. <laughs> So yeah, that's basically our story, pretty much. That's nice. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Yeah. So yeah, and... So, like, going back to you, what are the things that, like, you have grown up? I mean, I think you kind of brushed upon it with sci-fi stuff, but that have, like, kind of influenced you the most, sort of thing? Um, the most influence comes from, I would say, Final Fantasy and Chrono Trigger. Uh, oh. Definitely because, you know, I was like, God, well, I was in seventh, yeah, I was think I was in seventh grade when Final Fantasy VI came out in the U.S. So that was like that pivotal moment where I was already kind of doing computer programming. I'm looking at the game design elements. I'm looking at the art and the storylines. And I'm like, you know, that, that definitely influenced the way I would see, uh, you know, pretty much everything else that I was kind of, you know, getting involved in. And then, of course, Chrono Trigger hits the scene. And you can't, like, not love Chrono Trigger. So, of course, that's going to influence the hell out of me as well. But I guess when it when it comes to, to other things, like comic books are a huge, huge influence on everything that I do. Um, you know, I, I grew up in comic books. My whole family has been collecting comic books since, like, the 50s. So when it comes to comic books and comic book characters, like, everything comic book related is basically on the table for me. Uh, and then, you know, I said musically, heavy metal, hip-hop, video game soundtracks, uh, New Age and, and Celtic stuff was, like, in there, you know, like, Inya and, and all that, like, I, I don't know if people know, I had, like, an Inya fetish for, like, the longest time. Um, <laughs> um, uh, and then, like, in the in the new, you know, kind of millennium or whatever, I, I started getting into Coheed and Cambria, which kind of showed me that it's, it's okay and it's actually a brilliant way to tell stories through music and that you can actually make a living doing something like that. So, you know, that, that kind of influenced what I'm doing now and, and helped me go forward and, and kind of have the, the courage to do concept albums and, and get people into them and just hope for the best, you know? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Good insight. Um, I was going to say, but I probably should have done this earlier, um, <laughs> to Andy, the sort of like, um, what the, explain what Digital Champions is, sort of thing, and like, what it's about. <laughs> Ooh, okay, so we get to talk about a little DC stuff here now. Okay, so, um, for, for everybody, yeah. you know, uh, Digital Champions is 
This series that I've created that kind of follows and chronicles the characters Alpha Riff, myself, and MZ, which is played by my girl, um, their, their kind of adventures and mishaps and, and everything else that goes along with it. Um, they are bounty hunters. They live in the world of Digitalia. I'm a cybernetic bounty hunter. She's my AI partner, so we work in tandem to basically, you know, get the bounty, get the credits, um, and get away as best we can. And the first kind of full story is Digital Champions Migdal Babel, which is Hebrew for Tower of Babel. And in that album that I put out last year, it came out last November. Um, uh, basically, we, we start out doing, you know, just a normal kind of bounty, and we get wrapped up in a plot to bring down the whole world when we find uh, this lethal code that's kind of going around. It's kind of making people zombies, turn them into code demons that multiply, kind of become like an Akira type situation where they're growing and wreaking havoc across the city and we have to figure out where it's coming from and how we can actually stop it. And you know, I released that and that had like a lot of success. We came off the back of a really, really successful Indiegogo campaign. So it was like people were kind of fiending for this kind of concept record where Everybody involved is playing a character, you know, any anybody who appears on the album is actually playing a character So they have their character name. We had trading cards made up the trading cards were were done in part by uh, Danji's designs and uh, <laughs> And uh, you know like everybody was like super excited because because here was these not just an album that these physical things that you could kind of get and it was you know you you turn on the back and there's bio information there's cool 16-bit pixel art that that dan you know helped us helped us put out and and you know people were like holy crap you guys are actually doing something with this so you know we kind of went forward with that and we started uh this thing called digital champions consortium where people can be um you know you can come in as, a, as an artist of any kind comic book artist uh an author you know somebody who wants to do a screen play anybody who's a musician you can come in you pitch us an idea uh, or uh, you know a storyline or something and, and we kind of you know give you the thumbs up or thumbs down and you go forward with it it's your project you can create stories in the world of digitality even using the characters that i've created so you could be like alpha if and mz are off doing this bounty somewhere and i didn't write the story you wrote the story so that's kind of you know what digital champions is and, and what we're looking at as a whole you know yeah that's really cool yeah thank you yes and i know <laughs> now you know <laughs> but yeah because you like i remember in like some of the interviews you said like the idea was sort of like the star of expanded universe sort of concept like yep this whole thing where anyone can pitch in and if it works it just it just gets added to it yeah. and grows the story and the whole universe around it sort of thing yep exactly and obviously when, as soon as you mentioned stars expanding universe i was just like yes <laughs> <laughs> such a big part of that <laughs> well i like that was my thing when i was in when i was in high school and junior high it was like you know star wars hadn't been in theaters for i guess a decade or whatever by that point so the idea of being able to get like new media in that universe was super exciting to me and nobody else was doing that i i couldn't you know go to somebody else's kind of series and be like yo that's you know i can i can go read a book by say peter david or something that was created by you know somebody else and you, you you really couldn't do that like D D kind of had it but yeah D and D is based on the concept of just everybody creates whatever the hell they want, you know. So it was like Star Wars already had something kind of set, and you could come in and, and pitch an idea and do something. I was like, man, I like that idea. I want people to do that with something I create. Yeah, exactly. yeah, that's really cool. Sorry, I'm trying to decide for my handwriting. <laughs> 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 Okay, so like obviously um, with concepts, obviously a big focus is the characters, so like what are some of the characters in pretty much anything, sort of either growing up or just now or whatever, in any media that have like inspired you sort of thing, like do you, know, you have like a sort of character you see and you think that's so awesome? Yeah. Like obviously I'm a character designer, so I focus on like designing them a lot, so obviously um, you know, a lot of them inspire me. Um. For, for me, yeah, it's been, uh, I really like, I like strong female characters. And by, by strong, I don't mean like 
like she's you know an asshole or anything like that. I mean, strong in the sense that she knows how to look at a situation and, and take charge and like resolve the situation. Um, Alita from Battle Angel Alita has been one of my favorite characters to kind of reference. I love the the idea that she is kind of a cyborg, you know, in this real petite cyborg who will basically destroy you if you if you cross her. Um, you know, so uh, you see a lot of that in, in everything I approach. Um, I love Ripley from, you know, the Alien franchise, because I think she's freaking awesome. Sigourney Reaver is actually one of my favorite actresses of all time, so, like, looking at her, that's that's one of the, the people I kind of, you know, reference and, and you know, kind of influences stuff that I do. Um, Gambit from, you know, X-Men is my absolute favorite mutant of all time. You will not, you can't say anything bad about Gambit, because I will get in a fist fight with you. Yeah, I don't... <laughs> Like he is, he is one of my all-time favorite characters. I love. I actually was talking about this the other day with somebody. I love the the fact that that in most superhero comics, the the hero always have has you know the the means via their powers to like resolve a situation. Gambit's power is literally just to charge stuff up and make it explode. So he can't resolve really anything doing doing that. You know, he, it's all has to be you know from his his kind of his smart, his brain. But a lot of it is luck because when you read his comic books, you realize Gambit is actually kind of clueless and he's he's a ladies' man. But a lot of the time, he's tripping over his own two feet when in you know a confrontational situation of any kind. So it's like a lot of luck has to go into that. I love that about you know his character. So I, I like to put that into a lot of the characters I write. Um, God, what else? Frog from Chrono Trigger. You know, kind of... <laughs> we got a fan over here. Um, you know, Frog from Chrono Trigger. I love the fact that he is he's a noble guy, and even though he had a lot of bad stuff happen to him, he's still, like, willing to stand up for what's right. I'm like, yeah, that's that's my dude right there. And then uh, the more recent one would be, would be uh, Dave Tennant's uh, Doctor Who character, because I think I identified with him the most. Um, a lot of loss, a lot of, of lost loves with him, so I, I really identify with his character. You know, I like to put that in the things that I'm writing, so I think overall that would probably be kind of a nice cross-section of what influences me character-wise, what I look for when I'm trying to put together a character list. Yeah, got a, got a good, uh, broad range of character there. I was going to say, actually, with um, Gambit, what are your thoughts on the, uh, the new X-Men movie with the battle in? Um, so, I'm actually kind of excited because when it comes to Channing Tatum, I actually like him in a bunch of different stuff. And somebody just recently posted, I can't remember who it is off the top of my head, but somebody recently posted when I linked that uh, Olivia Munn was tapped as Psylocke for the new X-Men. And we were talking about uh, Gambit in the, in the comments. And somebody said, basically, Channing Tatum already plays Gambit in pretty much everything he does. And I was like... Yeah, yeah, he pretty much does. Like, he, he always gets into some type of trouble, but he has to use, like, his... uses his body to try to get out of... <laughs> like, I'm gonna sleep with every chick just so I can try to get out of this situation. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that's pretty much damn it. <laughs> so, I'm, you know, I'm ready for it. Like, I... I at first, I was kind of iffy on the casting, but then, you know, I'm looking at his history, and, and his family is from Louisiana. He was, I think, born in Mississippi. His mom's from, like, Alabama, so it's, he already has a nice cross-section of the southern roots that, that Gambit, you know, has within his character scope. So, I'm keeping my, my fingers crossed. I'm like, don't do me wrong. I'm in your corner, Channing. You know, don't, don't do me wrong. I'll, I'll have to come punch you in your face if you do. Bye. <laughs> You said, like, um, obviously video game music is quite an impact mm -hmm. on some of you. What would you say is, like, I mean, not, like, specifically, but what's your favourite soundtrack, sort of? You don't have to be part of the whole series, but, like, one specific soundtrack that really, like, hit you, sort of thing. Ooh. Um, Chrono Crosses. Chrono Cross, I think, had the absolute best soundtrack of any game, movie, like, any, any... Period. Um, all of 
the music was on point, but it's the last, I want to say four or five songs, starting with um, Star Stealing Girl, to all the way to the end. I think when it comes to ending climaxes, musically, that is the best arrangement of music on the face of the earth. You, there is, you cannot argue with me any way, shape, or form. That is the best arrangement of music on the face of the earth. You know what? When I die, I want that whole arrangement of music played from front to back at like my funeral. Just, just do it. Just send me off that way. I want it like that. Oh, man. I'll, I'll be, I'll be, I'm just going to listen to some music anyway, so I... Yeah, then. Uh, song will just... Yeah. That and Tower of Stars, yeah. that's uh, phenomenal. Yeah, it's like, because like, it was the, that was the first um, video game soundtrack that I listened to like on its own before I'd played the game. <laughs> and it was just like, it just like, crippled me. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, it was you know, too emotionally intense. You I was can like, feel oh. the emotion yeah. without having seen what it was actually. Yeah, that's how, that's how I played it. And then when you, when you learn what the story is, it's, it's you know, Magus kind of jumping through time trying to find a sister. Yeah. And and Shala is, you know, keeps getting split apart, and she's in, you know, Chrono Cross as kid, and as, you know, this weird amalgamation on the end boss on Lavos's kind of corpse or whatever, and you just kind of realize, like, holy crap, nobody will ever find her. She's lost in time and space. Like, that's the that's the scariest and, and saddest thing when you're looking for your family and you can't find them. It's, it's like deep on so many levels. Yeah. But I think, yeah. I think most people didn't like about it was the, like, messing with the character, original character sort of thing. Yeah. Cause, but obviously what people didn't like, let's say, in was, like, the, the whole thing focused on different dimensions. So it's like, mm -hmm. it's telling him, like, in that thing, something bad happened to him. But obviously. Yeah. 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 Well. So it's like, it's not definite. No, it's like, it doesn't really confirm yeah. It just like, shows you like a potential future yeah. that you get to see. It's like quite like, um, depressing. <laughs> yep. Like, like really hard boss or um, Lena's dad. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, like when it shows like Chrono. Oh yeah, the, the, the broken balance. Yeah, yeah. so it's destroying all the things that possibly happened but not happened yet. So yeah, Cause I can understand why people didn't like it, but at the same time it's it's uh, one of my favourites anyway. Yeah, definitely. And I only played it on it because like, yeah. it never came out on the PlayStation here. Is only you. Oh man, like on original PlayStation, it was like when you got it, it was such an experience because, especially being like such a Chrono Trigger fan, I was like, oh, are they, they show, you know, like some of the original stuff and they're going to show the original characters. And then, like you said, the only person it confirms, I feel like it confirms is, is dead, dead would be Luca. That's the only person that I feel it confirmed because you saw her, 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 you know, like orphanage or whatever where she was, had the kids and it was on fire and you're like yeah i don't think she escaped that and and robo i feel like robo can't be killed so even though his his core was destroyed at one point i feel like robo is somewhere just chilling out in the in the ether you know but the only problem i had with the game was too many characters i mean there's like 40 freaking characters or something i'm like half these characters i don't even know what you do i'm not putting you in my party <laughs> and a lot of the time as well it's really hard just to unlock them like you didn't you just like bypassed loads and you didn't realize you could get them yep. yeah. it's like what <laughs> <laughs> i'm not going back for that dude it's a bit insane but yeah it was a great game i love it i mean started figuring out what was going on with links and yeah. why he was oh twist mm -hmm. yeah Talking about that. Oh, <laughs> um, yeah. So talking about music, but not necessarily game music. Um, you've done well. You feature on quite a lot of collaborations and stuff. And oh god, yeah. With this digital champions project, like you get pretty much everyone ever involved in them that I've known. <laughs> and I've, I've, um, I've heard you talking about the next one and like the people are on that. It's just, it's insane really, the features and stuff. So um, out of all the collaborations that you've done, what has your been the most fun and, well, possibly favourite, if you can choose a favourite? Oh, oh my god, why would you put me on the spot like that? <laughs> like you could choose a favourite, but yeah. Oh, choosing favourites, I don't know. Um, Actually, I would say like, I think one of my most 
fun ones was probably one of my first ones. It was with One Up, and we we rapped about Sephiroth on this Final Fantasy VII track, and it, I think it, that one was probably the most fun because I was really fresh at doing collabs like that with somebody else and kind of just you know going off of what they were doing and and jumping into it. And I when we put out the original track, I thought I was spitting fire. I was like, man, I'm going so hard on this track, and <laughs> we just recently re did the track and when I went back and listened to the old one I was like oh my god this this sucks like both of us improved it was like two years later so both of us improved and you know just kind of listening to the new one I was like yeah now we're going now this is the track I think would be if we had put it out back then both of us would have blown up in a much bigger way people would have been like oh these dudes are crazy you know but that was probably my most fun one um but my favorite uh, why would you put me on the spot like that? <laughs> it's like, oh, there's so many favorites. There's even some that aren't released yet that I can't even I can't even really talk about, and I'd be like, that's my favorite. Oh wait, no, I can't talk about that one. Uh, it's a secret. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know what my favorite one is. I, there's something I like about pretty much every single one. Um, there was one I did with Cordless called Marketing 101, and in it, we basically were talking about how to get on the internet and market yourself and, and how not to be one of those check my SoundCloud bruh kind of guys. And, and uh, I think that one would probably be one of my favorites. I, I don't listen to it that often because I try not to, like, just listen to my music for kicks, you know, like shits and giggles or whatever. Like, I don't listen to it for kicks, but... If that comes on, I don't turn it. I'll, I'll say it like that. I think that the beat and I think both of our flows meshed really well on that track, so it's probably one of my favorites. Okay. Um, who, well, without giving any spoilers, who are you aiming to work in the future? Like, um, <laughs> you like your goals to work with maybe someone who you haven't quite got yet, sort of thing, in the collaboration? Mm. Would it be out of the realm to say uh, I'd love if uh, Spielberg directed a Digital Champions movie? Well, he's said it. Or like the Wachowskis. Like if they, if I feel like the Wachowskis would actually bring the Digital Champions vision to life in a way that would make sense. It'd be almost, I don't want to say like the Matrix 2.0, but I think it would, if they got their hands on it, I can envision them actually putting out something that was, I would, I would be pretty happy with. Even if the script was absolute trash, I'd be like, man, I love the way this movie looks. <laughs> <laughs> like just watch it on mute and you'll love the way it looks. Like just don't don't listen to it. Just just, just watch it. <laughs> um I, I guess of not aiming so high, because you know, that's that's kind of like out of the realm of reality, but um you think Dr. Awkward would be fun to work with. I think having him play a character on like a Digital Champions album would be really, really fun. Um, MC Front a Lot, I said that in another interview. I already have a character that I think MC Front a Lot would actually be really, really good on. Uh, you know, and it, if, if you've ever seen him live or if you've ever seen like a music video of his, you know, kind of his persona, like he would he would slay this character. That, you would be like, yup, that was the character he was born to play. Um, um, and then I can't get into spoilers because I just had something confirmed today that was really exciting for me. So can't give away spoilers yet, but that person will be on the next album. Oh, now I'm excited. <laughs> so, I'm going to be going through people right now. I'm just like pestering you later. Actually, man, we'll talk off air. Got the insider scoop. Um, okay, I don't think you know much. No, but they're all no. good. <laughs> they're all good, Andrew. Don't worry. Well, you need to check them out. Like, seriously, if you have not checked them out, check them all out because that's, when it comes to music, that's just quality stuff. You know, I don't even, when when people say nerdcore or whatever, a lot of people think either the really good people or the really bad people. It doesn't matter who, you, who you're talking about. These people are just quality musicians, period. Like, even if you're not in a nerdcore, you can still get into them. So, yeah. I think you like them just follow. Yeah, game yeah, yeah. I'm just like trying to look out for that. 
you're going for it. No, I'll get it. Don't worry. Um, okay. Yeah. Covered a lot of questions. Let's see what's next. Notebook number two. Pull it out. Pull it out. <laughs> I'm out of notebook. <laughs> Okay, this is quite a deep question. Ooh. Prepare yourself. <laughs> the cheese broker, I like it. Do you find writing a good form of escapism? This might be an obvious question. Like therapy sort of thing. Like projecting um, sort of things you're dealing with real life into your work that you do, that you can then tackle in, in that project. To be, to be honest, that is pretty much all I do. Um... <laughs> Like, I don't, I, I'm one of those people, uh, if my family hates me for this, I don't talk about whatever's bothering me or my issues or whatever. My girlfriend hates this too. But I tell people, if you want to know what's going on with me, like, grab a hold of a script or listen to an album or a song, because it's all in there. Even if it's in code, it's all in there. And that's just, that's the only way that I know how to kind of, you know, say what's on my mind. Like, I don't like putting my heart on my sleeve and then telling somebody about it. I like to put it into something that kind of has longevity, you know, because for me I can say it to you and then it's kind of, it's gone, but if I put it into a song, it's something that I can reference and look at and remember, okay that happened, how did I grow from it you know, and, and stuff like that and kind of five years from now somebody might be like, hey, what, what happened to you five years ago? And I'm like, oh, here's some songs that reference that thing you know, instead of me trying to piece together through my fragmented memories, you know, here's the actual recording or, you know, the actual video or whatever of what it was, you know. I guess it's a good way of doing it, and, and it's not only a good way of, like, I don't clearly have sort of thing, but also, like, you're making, like, you're putting it in something you care about as well. Like, you've got mm-hmm. this outfit, it's like, you know, it'll work. That's cool. I kind of, like, wrote that question thinking it's kind of, I already know the answer, but... I'm gonna write it anyway because it makes me sound clever. Good <laughs> question, Andrew. I'm gonna ask it. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, okay. Interesting. Um, considering how much you're branching out of your digital champions uh, enterprise, let's call it that now, uh, into various <laughs> media and merchandise, at what point are we to expect to see DC inspired condoms and a sort of range of sex toys? Oh, oh my lord. <laughs> um, let me see. Uh, <laughs> honestly, that stuff should already been out because somebody told me they got laid to my album the other day, and I'm like, what? Like, who puts on like a concept record and goes, let's have Scott <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, I just I need to listen to this bit. It's, it's an important. <laughs> like, like, really? You, I would say, I would, oh, uh, it's kind of, it's almost giving away spoilers. I would say uh, they should have just waited for the next album. The first, like, two tracks could have got them in, in the mood. Jesus, man. Um, let me see, condoms and other assorted sex toys. <laughs> I'm like, uh, should I talk to the hustler stores and see if we can get something in there? Like, you you get you buy a, a dildo or a vibrator or something, you get the album for free. Like, like listen to listen to a track number, you know, whatever, and it'll get you in the mood. It's got the it's got the best rhythm for your your subscribe. <laughs> Uh, that would be kind of that would be kind of awkward, only because uh, like part of me, because we want to do conventions and stuff, so we we're gonna be around like little kids and all that. So it'd be like it'd be like okay, we have the figurines, right? The good figurines. We got the trading cards, just the comic books, some T-shirts, CDs, and then randomly down there, and it would be next to like Dan. I would be with you at the con, so it'd be next to you, a bunch of condoms with the 16-bit art right there. <laughs> You might leave them. <laughs> yeah. Like, and the kid would be like, "Mom, what's this?" And I'd be like, "That's that's gum. <laughs> that right? That's gum." <laughs> what's that again? The table moving along slowly. <laughs> oh yeah, that would be quite awkward. But also, you know, something to consider. No. <laughs> 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 Yeah. 
No, but like, I'm trying to think of the most serious way to like go back to the question. Like, um, <laughs> <laughs> what sort of, uh, different things have you thought about merchandising, sort of thing? Um, so we. We, we kind of have been in talks with doing the figurines thing. So we have the, we already have the trading cards. Dan and I are working on the comic book. Um, I got some other people working on different comic books and manga. So we got that coming. We got, you know, of course, T-shirts and, and you know, CDs and all that. When you're a musician, you have to have, like, the standard fare. I've been wanting to do different things. Condoms might be a little... I, I don't know. That might be kind of weird. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe not. Um, I would actually like to to do kind of digital champions clothing in the sense of not t-shirts like the one that I'm wearing right now, by the way. Um, but, <laughs> but, you know, like, um, you could get Alpha's breastplate, you know, that he's wearing, or, you know, you could get his his katana or his gloves, or you could get contacts that look like MZ's eyes when she's using her power or you know just different stuff the different different things the characters wear I'd probably actually do like a BB Stewart line of clothing it would be all like suits and ties and like all this stuff because he's like he's the guy who goes out he he's dressed to the nines like you you can't tell him otherwise he's the businessman in the white suit with the nice you know gold sh shirt underneath and the white tie and the cane and all that that'd be pretty cool <laughs> Oh, man, actually, now that I think about it. <laughs> yeah, so I was thinking, because um, recently uh, you've got um, Amanda to do the cosplay stuff. Yep. yep. So, like, it'd be really cool if you then had like the actual the part of the merchandise, is, like the character's actual um, accessories and clothes and stuff. That's pretty neat, mm -hmm. I think. That would be pretty bomb, yeah. honestly. Like... Yeah, I got some people I need to talk to today. I think yeah. I'm gonna send them a, a private message. I think so, yeah, <laughs> get on that. <laughs> <laughs> that's, why, that's not like something you really see that much because when people do cosplay, they're usually just obviously part of the enjoyment of making it yourself. Obviously, mm -hmm. you see a lot of like, um, well, apart from the like the really expensive lights and stuff, yeah, that you just like collectors, but to actually like use like like clothing and accessories, so I can't believe a good thing to aim for. Just saying. <laughs> and, and, well, and we have, um, you know, something that the Digital Champions Consortium has been working on, and I'm going to be announcing in May, you know, something that we've been working on, and having accessories from the characters would kind of tie into that. That'd be actually, that'd be pretty dope, actually. That's really cool, I think. Look at that. Dan's part of the consortium coming out with ideas, just tossing them at me like, hey, dude, you should do this. And I'm like, yo, I'm doing that. Now. <laughs> yeah. No, it's like, because like, we've talked lots before, but when you're like, just trying face to face, just like, just ideas fly out. I know, I'm like, I gotta, I gotta start writing things down, like. Yeah. <laughs> Lists. Yeah. <laughs> If you need a list, go silent. This guy right here. <laughs> but yeah. The man of the lists. Yeah, well, that's what he's trying to talk about. He's, he's, he's good at uh, game documentation and yeah. script writing and all that sort of stuff. Not oh, script writing? I'm just throwing it back. I've done script writing. I've okay. done many scripts for um, game that I can't mention. <laughs> game that is un unreleased yet. Yeah, so yeah. I need to get your name out there. We'll do another yeah, interview. We'll do one after this. Yeah. After Chinese. After Chinese. <laughs> yeah, we're having Chinese for dinner. Just drop that in there. Oh, man. That made me... That, like, I'm starving right now. I haven't made anything to eat yet. Oh, what? <laughs> get yourself a big-ass sandwich and just, like, just carry on talking. <laughs> I don't know. Oh. Sure, you guys, it's my dark kitchen trying to get something to eat. You guys are like, where, where is this dude at? All you see is like metal appliances and like floor. the ambient. floor. Yeah. It's like all these sound effects going on. <laughs> just getting some food. Um, yeah, so. What have we already asked you? Do 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 do. That'd be great on the chat show. I just like to just do this big roll of paper and scroll. <laughs> Yeah. So, so I, they, they have it on a screen. <laughs> yeah, they got no cue. Yeah, okay, well, then come over. Yeah. <laughs> have it on a screen. <laughs> <laughs> this is 
few inventions. Words <laughs> moving it. before my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So yeah, you're like you're a very busy man, obviously. You have your mm. job at the casino, which you know. Yes, I do. And uh, obviously, you're constantly working on your digital champion stuff, and you know, yep. pretty much everything to do with that. So we have a busy schedule. Do you have any time to play games at any point? And if so, um, playing. <laughs> Um, let me see. So I, I see on Facebook all these people playing like mass new games, and I'm just like, I don't know how anybody has time to play games. I really don't. Like, I, I can't figure it out. The only thing that I play, don't kill me. I play The Sims 4. Okay. I, 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 <laughs> look, fist, fist, fist bump through the computer. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I play. I play to unwind. Uh, sometimes, because I don't. I don't know if a lot of people know. In New Orleans, you can you can go to a daiquiri shop and drive through and like get drive-through daiquiris like any any time of day. It doesn't matter. So so we'll get off of work, right? And and we'll go to our drive-through daiquiri spot and we'll get like you can get um, 44 ounce whatever to like seven bucks, I think five or seven bucks. It depends because they have specials or whatever. And it's it doesn't sound like a lot of alcohol. Uh, it'll put you on your ass. Um, I, I'll say like like you will get alcohol poisoning if you drink it too fast. Um, so we go through, we get that, and then I'll come home. That's On those days, I know nothing's getting worked on. Like, I, there's no music, no video that's getting worked on. On those days, I'll sit in front of the computer in Sims 4, and I got the Get to Work expansion pack, so I'll be running my retail shop while, like, but well, like one of my dudes is a, a detective, so I'll be trying to solve cases with him. And then people are getting abducted by aliens, and I got like an alien on my block, so I'll go over to the alien's house and chill out, and help them build their rocket ship. Like, uh, and I'm I'm drunk as hell doing this, so everything is hilarious to me. But that's pretty much that's pretty much the only thing that I'm I'm playing playing. I got like some games on my phone, like Star Wars Commander, that I kind of check in on, you know once every eight hours but uh, i don't I, yeah i don't really have a lot of time to play games i just try to i watch other people play stuff on like twitch while i'm working on something so i was gonna say like <laughs> like when you get drunk how drunk do you get that, that like the things in the game aren't actually happening after coming out of the screens <laughs> Uh, if I get, cause see, I'll finish my drink and then sometimes I start on MZ's drink. So, uh, finish it? I'll just take this. <laughs> At that point, you know, stuff on the game is pretty much, uh, whatever it is. I, I can't even really focus at that point. I'm just laughing at, at you know, the dumbest stuff. Uh, well, that's like all though. Yeah, just every day. Like. <laughs> <laughs> that much, and he's just like, oh, uh, oh. We haven't got a drive-through daiquiri. We haven't got a drive. We haven't got access to a drive-through daiquiri. <laughs> That's it. I'm coming over there. I'm gonna open one. I'm gonna try to get laws changed. I'm gonna open a couple. I'm gonna franchise them out. Call them Digital Champions Daiquiris. <laughs> like you, <laughs> you come. He's gonna be sick. He's gonna be the drive-through <laughs> dinner <those> drinks. <laughs> Like, you come through, you get your daiquiri, then if you want, you can come inside and get, like, a cybernetic eye or an arm or a leg or something. <laughs> like, we do it, like, right off the premises. <laughs> cybernetic daiquiris in one place. Yeah, this is a good point. Oh, come on. So there's another guy out there. You can just get working on that. What? Boom, boom. There you go. If the Sims, once your characters start coming more established, you could get... Um, custom content for the Sims of your character's costume. I like, I like the way this guy thinks right here. <laughs> EA, EA, get me on the phone right now. I, I, you know what? Hmm. I'm gonna go download some of the uh, the builders right now and start trying to see if I can design stuff and put it on the gallery. Yeah, do it. I like. I'm really surprised. Like when you say play Sims, like you just make 
like all your DC stuff, like in the Sims and like, but like it's in like a sort of like a casual like environment, just like <laughs> some characters just like, uh, sort of things like, yeah. like cleaning the dishes, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Clean the dishes to go, yeah, I've got to save the world tomorrow, but today the dishes come first. <laughs> Alpha doesn't work out, so he's like, he's the biggest, fattest dude with a cybernetic arm and legs and all that. And MZ is like, she gets pregnant, even though she can't get pregnant in Digital Champions. Under no circumstances, she gets pregnant as like, <laughs> as like a kid or whatever. That'd be awesome. Wow. So we've all these ideas. Yeah. Yeah. If you need any more ideas, just come and talk to us. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. And... I was going to say, after that, a harbinger would be really hard to do. <laughs> but he would. Um, anyway. Yeah, yeah like, like, your design is when he, he started grabbing stuff. His original design is kind of like uh, Ultron, I guess. Yeah, okay, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 I got that. I mean, I got a bit carried away though when, like, you <laughs> described into me, my, my imagination went into overdrive, so. Yeah. Well, it, I shouldn't, you know what? I'm glad I didn't describe what he becomes in, like, the next three stories, because, yeah. You would have been like, uh, I gotta charge you $200 for this one. <laughs> <laughs> my price is so many skyrocketed. <laughs> Uh, uh, da, 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 da. Oh no, I think about all questions. Oh yeah, no. Andrew, fix the questions. Fix the questions. Um, right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that. I'm sorry. Don't put me on the spot like this. Well, I just did. <laughs> Okay, so hold on. I'm gonna ask. I'm gonna ask questions. Yeah, you ask questions. Yeah, let's go. Where did you guys get your your names for your company slash design studio slash game development houses? Well, wow. do you want to ask yours first? Yeah, my, mine was um, pretty easy. <laughs> Maybe yeah. <laughs> it involves me. Yeah, um, because my last name's Cheatham and his is Hill, so it just combines <laughs> the chill. <laughs> and that's it. We can like uh, the animated like mock up or anything. Right? <laughs> merged together. And just, like, chill. <laughs> and then the creative thing came more recently. Um, Wanting because like you can say chill, but it doesn't really tell you anything. Yeah, it's a bit. So adding creative on it just adds a bit more dynamics to it to give it more focus on that it is creative design, or it just gives it it's something creative. Yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's not. Just like a I like, I like. Yeah, it's not like an ice cream. <laughs> 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 Overdrive exactly helps. Yeah, a chill. <laughs> yeah, a bit <laughs> We'll be fine with that idea now. <laughs> yeah, but we could go one better. We will have turf walls over it. Blue crackers. <laughs> Blue crackers. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, yeah, and mine was literally just a username of myself where I put a G on the end, Japanese of my name, pretty much, because I love Japanese culture. And then, like, yeah, really early on when we went to college, it was, like, the first thing we did because it was, like, a graphic design course. It was, like, create your own... Um, what do you call it? Brand identity sort of thing. Yeah. Bizarre. Mm -hmm. Danji a lot. Danji's designs has a nice ring to it. And I just literally had that for like over five years. And then recently, like a few years back, I discovered it was this random needlework that has a very simple needlework company that has a very similar name, and I was like really angry. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's different. It's a one letter different. Danji. <laughs> Danji. I won't, I won't <laughs> because it's all about me. So. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, but that's what I'm like. That's almost like, uh, that's almost like recently I found out that DC has some stuff in the EU. Yeah. And I was like, really? Yeah. So, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll be using the name of it and stuff. It's a bit awkward, but yeah. We'll think the way around it. <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm, I, I've been kind of brainstorming on that, so yeah. <laughs> Andrew, you can be on the list. Um, let's see. I can make lists. It's a good, yeah. it's a good start. <laughs> I can make points. Yeah. <laughs> Bullet points. So, go on. 
What's your what, what what have you released that you are most proud of that you think has has brought you the biggest fame and fortune? And if you were to die right now, you'd be like, that's my that's that's my biggest project. I love what I did right there. Is this saying the best was? It, it, it don't matter. <laughs> um, Andrew, do you want to answer? <laughs> Uh, well, the only thing I have released is the Handicapped game, and I don't want to pass comment on that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Probably best if we don't, we'll have a comment. No, it's basically um, our first proper game project that we were given. Okay. Been through circumstances kind of outside of our control. It turned into a bit of a fiasco, creating it for what is basically a very simple game. Yeah. Oh, hold on, hold on. We want. Yes. Let me hear about this. Okay. Well, <laughs> how far can we go through about, you know? Um, <laughs> problems with, like, uh, programmers and stuff. Yeah, pro problems with um, the client. Yeah, like, changing ideas at the last minute when we were essentially finished. Yeah, we'd been working on it quite a while, and we didn't have a coder, um, so we were just doing all the design-based stuff. And yeah. um, we showed them, as it was going along, what was happening, and then... Um, Eventually, we went and saw him. Um, we have a little mini character in it, and he's been in it since the start. We showed him in from the start, and they were fine with it. And then all of a sudden, right at the end of it, they were like, No, we don't like him. Yeah, like he doesn't represent us because he's basically like a robot, sort of like a little fun robot character. I guess you could say he's a bit like uh -huh. Claptrap. Yeah, he's a bit like Claptrap. Everyone said, Oh, he's a little cl Claptrap, but he actually got the idea from a Star Wars robot. Yeah. <laughs> so he's like, I see what you mean, but yeah. But yeah, it's basically just a little fun robot mascot, and then... Yeah. Suppo it's supposed to be a robotic representation of the guy that we did it for. Oh, yeah. Because essentially, the game's based on their company. They're like a, like a handyman service, so they do a bit of everything construction and stuff. So um, the game's based around the sort of jobs they do, basically. Yeah. Well, there weren't too many changes at the end of it, and it was, it was getting ridiculous. It got a bit frustrating, because it, it, it dragged on. But far too long. Very long time. And I was at university and like another guy was and like you took on a lot more than yes. you still. <laughs> so yeah, it was very stressful. I was always supposed to make the list. And yeah. here I was, I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing, la la la. I'm what, what, what were you coding in at the time? <laughs> um, action scripts three. So flash. And it's horrendous. <laughs> <laughs> Damn! God, man! Jesus! Yeah, you stand up tight, really, but... <laughs> I, yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I saw that once, and I, I went the other way. Um, cause I self-taught myself C, and when I was in school, I was learning Pascal and Visual Basic, and then, um, uh, they finally switched to C++, so, like, C is my, is my basis, and I've kind of started learning Java a little bit, and, you know, JavaScript a little bit, even though I don't really need to learn JavaScript, it's just more like, hey, here's something to kind of learn. Um, and then, of course, like, last year and the year before that, I started learning Objective-C, so that's that's like my basis and any scripting language like that I hate it I want it to die <laughs> die the, the greatest death known to man it makes absolutely no sense it's disgusting looking to me that very much sums up yeah, it sums up my <laughs> <laughs> just want to say because obviously we're not coders or programs or anything we just like do we use a program that look look the best basically? So, yeah. And it's a simple flash game, so yeah. it's really basic. Right, uh, the person that did the coding event was like, oh yeah, I, I did a bit of flash. Um, and then they moved up to Action Script 3, so it was like. Yeah. And he was like, oh, it's very similar to Java, but he still couldn't do it. Yeah. So yeah. I got the best that was, that was, that was like, we were supposed to be going on about what other thing we were most proud of. And we were just like, <laughs> that was like, no, I'm five minutes slagging off with this game we made. <laughs> I'm most um, you're most proud of how you uh, how you basically vacated the area once that game was given over to whoever and you were like no nope. <laughs> proud that we actually got it done I think that was the biggest achievement and we actually have a game yeah no matter what the game is we have a game made yeah and it's out there um. <laughs> but yeah. Well, there's like lots of like mini projects, I think mini projects. The projects that started off media that turned into massive <laughs> things. Yeah. Um, that I'm proud of working, but I can't until I've got like 
be uh, all finished and start yeah. getting designs and stuff. I can't say what it is or why. It's yeah. Compared to yours, which is why obviously you got projects going all the time. Yeah. Yeah, because I'm trying to promote Andy more because, like, I'm obviously a visual artist, so it's easy to, like, show my work. But because Andy uh-huh. does, like, writing stuff yeah. in, like, game documentation, it's hard <laughs> to kind of show it off. Because you can't say, hey, here's my 900 page uh, <laughs> document for yeah. a fantastic game. <laughs> just, just, <laughs> you'll get a disc. So, yeah, just trying to, like, get in contact and things like that. Because it's very, very good. Thank you. We will be talking, Andy. Yeah, thank we you. will be talking. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Good. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think, well, mm, I'm trying to think what the question was. What is it? I'm thinking I was proud of. Yeah. Um, for me, I guess like the odds and end toll poster, in a way, because mm-hmm. um, it opened a lot of doors for me, and I think it's still a really strong piece of work that... I, I, I did, like, not knowing sort of, like, what it'd lead to sort of thing. I just did it just as a one-off thing. And it's, like, yeah. Yeah. Like, so many great opportunities. Like, work with Mega Rand a lot and stuff. And people like you. And it's, like, fantastic. So, yeah. Probably that. I would, I would say, I would say honestly, yeah, that was the thing that kind of put you and everybody that I know. Like, they knew you based off of that poster. Because a lot of people went, you know, to... to you know, go see them live when they were kind of touring or whatever. Um, and then, of course, just Mega Ran's a huge influence to everybody. So if you can get your name attached to Mega Ran, you're gonna you're gonna actually get some traction. And then Sky Blue being such a big up and comer and getting a lot of attention himself. You know, that was you pretty much had the trifecta there though, because you had like D and D sluggers too. Like you basically <laughs> pretty much if you wanted to be noticed, you got. That was the e- that was the easiest way for you to get noticed based off of everything, you know. Yeah, it was crazy because I was like doing freelance work for so long, and literally the work load that I got while I was at college and university stuff was like months between like random yeah. jobs and stuff. And I literally had to walk around like in like Macclesfield, like with that bar I work for, I'd <laughs> around the negotiate work with them and stuff like that to get like a logo design job, and then like just through randomly messaging like Mega Ram through Facebook when he posted something he was after like a graphic artist I was like oh yeah I'll, I do stuff like that and then mm-hmm. it just blows up yeah. yeah so it was pure luck really <laughs> yeah. being at the right so, place so what, what what did you show him for him to be like okay I'm hiring you to take it on at the time I didn't even have like a proper online portfolio it was just my deviant art page <laughs> 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 but it's mostly fan art so yeah, I showed him that, and he liked it enough to give him a job, so... Nice. But yeah, I did pretty well, yeah. considering. Yeah. Nice. Let me see, what other questions do I have? Um, what What is your... Because you guys are obviously... You're gamers, game makers. What is your biggest inspiration when it comes to sitting down to do the design work for you, Andy, and then, Dan, the the art and the aesthetics for you? Um, for me, like, the, the, the main biggest influence growing up was Final Fantasy. Um, okay. Uh, I started with, like, I think properly started with 7. Um, I played 8 before it, but I didn't get into it, and then I went back to 8. After. Okay. Um, and my main sort of, I like to focus on characters, and once I've got the characters in place, I build the world around the characters, and Okay. Make sure that the characters have a huge focus, and um, sort of like Final Fantasy X, because that solely focused on these seven individuals going off on a quest to save the world, sort of thing. Whereas like, mm-hmm. also, like brings everything around them, especially Yuna. Yuna's like a huge inspiration to my. <laughs> Best my life of Yuna. <laughs> 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 The shrine. So shy and stuff, and then like, yeah. she's thrown out into this world, and she's becoming like she's basically a human sacrifice to stop. Yeah. Spoiler alert! They stay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the game's been out long enough. There's no uh, spoiler alert to for that. <laughs> um, and because, and then she starts falling in love, and then like she's got a dream. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and then like that's all taken away from her, and then Tensei, but we don't talk about Tensei, so 
No. Mm-mm. No, don't talk about the game. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Change the subject. Andrew. Unless I can. <laughs> no, got me on Andrew. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Right, what was, what was the question? Uh, inspirations for yeah. working um, games. Um, yeah, a lot of inspiration comes from games themselves. But also just um, a lot of other things, like... Like I said, I'm really into like Japanese culture and stuff. Um, like the obviously the, the cool periods, the samurai periods, things like that, and like their architecture and things like that. It depends on the game. Cause I'm, obviously, I'm really like character focused myself. So uh, mm-hmm. yeah, I don't know. I just like it's hard to explain really. You know, like, yeah, just do it. <laughs> yeah. And then you have to try and think about <laughs> it. Um, yeah, I guess like. Going back to games, it would be games like JRPGs, like, yeah. um, things like stuff. Mm-hmm. And, uh, any, of, any of the um, the Tales of games? Uh, yeah, yeah. I've only played one of them. Yeah, I've played a couple of them. I played Tales of the Abyss, which I really love. Once it's released on uh, the 3DS. Okay. Um, I played Symphony. Symphony. Symphony's brilliant game. Well, that, yeah, Symphonia was was pretty much my game for like two, three years. I would just go back and just keep playing it over and over and over again. Okay. I, still, I still need to finish it, but <laughs> and I need to borrow. It. <laughs> yeah, gosh, such a good game. Mostly like Kingdom Hearts. Maybe. Yeah, Kingdom Hearts. Yeah, mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I don't. It's like the the, the like classic PS1, PS2 sort of yeah. RPGs. And then, not so much now. <laughs> not yet. It's quite, quite hard to find JRPG now, it's like... Super good. But it's yeah. like a re-release of an original. Yeah. Like, we hadn't played Type Zero before, and no. it was like fantastic. Yeah, we're loving it, this five-year-old PSP re-release. Which <laughs> is amazing! <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, like... They don't... I just sent a moaning bit again. No. <laughs> okay. no, no. <laughs> Because they're trying to sort of westernise it. Yeah, they are westernising a lot of JRPGs. Like, 13 is very western. Mm. Like, the way it's done is very lazy. It's very western. <laughs> it doesn't make it... Don't. I like how saying that game doesn't exist. That, that, that game does not exist. We don't talk about that. That's a bad word in my family. <laughs> yeah, I like, was talking to about last time. It was like, it's just traumatising. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. Oh, I could go on. It's like, it's one of those games where, like, the soundtrack is really good. And you're like, man, okay, you know, the game should be. No. Just no. no. It's like 12 was like a, a really good game for. Yes. Yeah. Like RPGs. A lot of people don't like it just because it's so different, but yeah. it was a really solid game. Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah. And yeah. Star Wars. It was essentially like. It, it, was, it was Star Wars. Star Wars. Yeah. <laughs> it was pretty much Star Wars, yep. Yeah. Aesthetically, it was kind of Star Wars as well. Like all the other games, 7 and 8, were pretty much um, kind of a mash of cyber and steampunk kind of stuff. And then they kind of dropped back into the fantasy element. Right. But. Uh, yeah, 12 was pretty much, aesthetically, it was Star Wars. It was like a galaxy far away where you know there's going to be lasers shooting out of something and airships that go up to floating cities and, like, all this other crazy stuff. But at the same time, people look like they are from the Roman Empire. Like, what? Yeah, like you guys couldn't get actual pants. You had to wear like long, long flowing whatever. Oh wait, no. Here's a chick who has the tightest skirt on imaginable, and it's about that that long. And somehow you don't see everything of it. Like the characters, like they are literally just the main based off the archetypes of Star Wars. Yeah, so you've got like the princess who's against the the Empire. Yeah. You've got the old warrior who. You know, teaching this new kid on the block to yeah. help. And then you've got <laughs> the new kid who wants to be something, but he's, he just wants to get out of there and be, be something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You've got the random bounty hunter with his non human companion. <laughs> and then you've got him around. Yeah. Penelope. That non human companion is sexy Chewbacca. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fran. Fran. Yeah. yeah. She was essentially like a real life Playboy bunny. Yeah. With a belt. <laughs> Yeah, so, yeah. And ironically, it was actually the worst with the bell. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was the gameplay. Well, the gameplay was good. Yeah. Very good, actually. I want to play that game again. <laughs> I just talked myself into it. 
I played it a few years ago, but I'm like, I'm just like, it's so good. <sighs> Games. The last, I think the last Final Fantasy I played that I really, I really, really loved, because um, while I loved 12, I didn't, I didn't get to actually finish it. I played a little bit of it, so I, I wasn't like as ingrained and, you know, as other people, like I, I couldn't fillet it as much as other people can. Um, <laughs> but like, eight was like, that was my game, man. I, I was, when I was growing up, I was squall. People would be like, Warren, something's going going on over here. And I'd be like, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> like that kind of monologue thing going on. <laughs> it, it, it really was. Like, I'd just be, you'd, you'd see me just sitting there like this. And you know that I'm like, just passages are going through my brain, but I'm not saying anything. It was like those, if, if, if movies were real life, the long, awkward pause when like somebody's talking and they're zooming the camera in and then that person stops talking, that would be real life. It would just me staring, be staring at you like, oh, I'm supposed to say something. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. I was doing the monologue like in my head. I'm, I'm sorry, we had this whole conversation in here. I, you guys, you guys getting disconnected? Yeah. Are we burning through your data? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Ready. <laughs> okay. So, uh, well then. Okay. So, just want to say, big. Uh, Thanks for uh, spending time to talk to us and stuff. Thanks for having me, guys. That's all good. That's all good. No. Um, would you like to promote yourself? <laughs> shamelessly <laughs> and to the top then. You know I like to shamelessly promote myself. So I am Alpharith. I'm gonna I hope I hope Dan puts my name like right here. Just so everybody can see it. Alpharith. Um, you can find me at alpharith.com. That is my official website. You can also find me on Twitter. It is at alpharith. I'm on Instagram. That is alpharith music. I'm on YouTube, which is also alpharith music. I'm on uh, Google, which is alpharith music uh, and alpharith. Let me see. What else do I have? I have like everything. Uh, SoundCloud. Uh, just type in alpharith. You'll find me. You'll also find like pretty much every song I've ever been on. Uh, let me see. What else do I have? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I have a band camp. <laughs> my band camp is uh, alpharith.bandcamp.com. So if you go to my official site, you can find all the music there as well. Links to all kinds of stuff. You can also find Digital Champion stuff. Uh, you can go to thedigitalchampions.com. That will give you a little information about what Digital Champions is. And then you can find us on Facebook. That You will find Digital Champions there. We are the Digital Champions community on Facebook. We have a wiki page that will be up and running pretty soon and some other pretty exciting things coming down the pipeline so that's all about me <laughs> thanks again uh, I mean Alfred nearly gave his real identity away then so <laughs> thanks it, because I, I love people friending me so Warren Stallworth on Facebook if you want to friend me go ahead okay there you go no, no. there you go so yeah, get out of him and uh, check out all his uh, social media stuff. Go check out his music. He's fantastic and just a general all-round awesome guy. Thank you, thank you. Thanks again, uh, Warren, for joining us today. And we'll... Thanks for having me. No worries, man. See you later. Bye. See you.